I am here with Rookie of the Month, uh, Connor Knott from CUW. Mm-hmm. Uh, how you doing today? I'm doing well, Chris. Thanks uh, for having me. Appreciate this. And what made you choose Concordia as the school that you wanted to go to? All right, so I initially went to Concordia to play college baseball. I did that for two years, and I wanted to choose a school that I'd want to go to if I ended up quitting playing baseball, and that's obviously what I ended up doing. So I just I really liked the school's campus and its location from how far it was to my house and other family members, and that's pretty much why I chose it. Okay. Um, so what major do you study? I uh, study economics and uh, marketing. I'm doing a double major. What do you enjoy most about that so far? Um, I enjoy economics a lot. I think it's extremely interesting. I initially started off in college as a finance major, and I knew if I did that for the rest of my life, after I went through uh, so many classes, I was like, oh my god, this is so boring. <laughs> so I, I changed over to marketing, and that was better, but I was like, well, there's so many like you know people out there with a bachelor's degree in marketing, so I decided to tack on economics too, and I've just really enjoyed learning about economics. It's so interesting. It just everything revolves around economics and money, and I, I've just always, always had a money mindset. So I think that's kind of why I enjoy it so much. But I definitely would say I, I just love going to econ classes. And I've, I've never really loved going to school before. And this has been a really uh, new experience for me actually enjoying some of my classes. So, yeah, that's what I enjoy most about my degrees, I, I guess. Okay. Um, so what made you decide to start your club? Uh, well, following my quitting baseball, I was pretty bored. And um, I was like trying to think of, you know, how, like what, what club I could start at school. And I knew I wanted to do like an athletic club of some sort. And I was like looking up, you know, what clubs to start in college, that type of stuff, just to, like kind of get an idea for something. And I ran across uh, the NCDA and all that. And I contacted a few people and then it just kind of went from there. And I just, I knew that I wanted to do something more than just being a student. And I thought that, you know, being more involved on campus while not being in a sport and trying to start a club and, you know, get people together would be a whole bunch of fun. And yeah. Awesome. Uh, We are really good. We're really happy to see you guys uh, actually in the sport now, getting to go to a couple tournaments. Um, Yeah, it was uh, it was a long process. So I'm glad it's finally paying off. That's that's for sure. Yeah. Um, What sports did you play in high school that helped you prepare for dodgeball? Uh, in high school, all I played was baseball. Okay. I played a whole bunch of different sports growing up, but I knew baseball is what I wanted to do my whole life. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty much the only sport I played in high school. I was really dedicated to it, and I'm pretty sure that's what prepared me best for playing dodgeball for sure. What did you play in baseball? Like, what positions? I played outfield uh, during my later seasons, and I pitched for uh, all the way up until my junior year. Okay. I definitely feel like I can see where you were a pitcher in your dodgeball throw. I appreciate that. Yeah, I was I was a pretty good pitcher. I just um, hitting was kind of my specialty. So once I got up to varsity level, you know, you got to kind of choose one way or the other. And I decided to go with hitting in outfield. So, but okay. yeah, I've always had a pretty good arm. All right. Um, and you've been in the league for a semester now. Do you think you guys have any rivals? Um, I wouldn't say we have any rivals. I think everybody's been pretty nice to us so far. Um, I, I, I enjoy talking with everybody and meeting everybody. I don't think that we've had uh, any scuffles yet that would you know, cause a rivalry to start occurring. Maybe, maybe next semester we'll see something. And, uh, you know, we haven't been winning at all, so everybody's kind of getting frustrated. So I'm sure some of these tensions will probably boil up here and maybe we'll have a, a, a couple people say the wrong things to a different team and that might cause something. But so far I think we've been very kind to everybody and we haven't had any sort of rival feeling. So far. <laughs> we've definitely enjoyed having you in the league so far. Your team's been super, super nice from everything that I've seen. At least I really enjoy your team personally. I feel like you guys are aware of that at least. Yeah, yeah um, for sure. I don't think we have any rivals per se. I mean, other teams might think differently, but me personally, I don't, I can't think of yeah. a team be a rival with i mean i know platteville wants to be like rivals with us but there's a lot of people on that team that i really enjoy and they're just so talented that 
to have a good rivalry, you got to be pretty level and and playing skill. Yeah. So we're not not quite there yet. So we'll see. We'll I see. I'm like sure. Once you guys build as a team, it'll be easier to have a rivalry. But I also think that it's kind of fun to have one of the like friendly rivalry rivalries, like some other teams do. So yeah, you guys for are sure. all still friends, but still rivals. Yeah, maybe I feel a little bit like like that with Matt. You know, I really wanted to get Matt out during our WMU and Concordia match. So yeah. maybe me and Matt have a little friendly rivalry going, but awesome. yeah, more a, a friendship than anything else. Yeah. Um, and so this one doesn't have to be like directed at your personal matches. It can be any match that you've seen. What do you think your favorite matchup that you've seen so far has been? Hmm. I'll give you two answers here. I'll, my favorite matchup that I've seen of other teams playing each other was the Kent and Central Michigan match. We actually roughed that one, and it was a really, really close match. I think it was like four to three was the final, and it was super close, really even match. I remember the Platteville tournament was like every single game was a blowout, so yeah. it was kind of like a lot of those games were very entertaining to watch or play in. Um, and I think our our, our favorite uh, match would probably be the uh, Kent match because it was the first match that we got a point and it was pretty close throughout. I mean, it could have been anybody's game the whole time, but we ended up losing, but it was really good to finally get some sort of, uh, some sort of winning feeling from, from getting a couple points. Yeah. Cause uh, during the platform tournament, we got goose egg for three games. So it was really, that was probably my team's favorite match. I think they'd all agree with me on that. Yeah, you guys had a really good match with Kent. I feel like that one went pretty well for all of you. Like, even though you guys didn't win, I definitely saw a lot more from your team. And I'm excited to see what you guys have in the future. Yeah, I agree. That was probably our, our most even match, but it just didn't go our way. It's all right, though. And do you have any, like, mentors or specific players that you're trying to model your game after? Uh, I would say... You have been a mentor for sure. Um, I think that Matt from Western Michigan has been a really important mentor to us. Um, I would probably say just you and Matt have been really helpful with everything so far. You guys have been, I mean, you mean you made the drive to our school to teach us a lot. and It would have been a lot worse if you didn't come to our practice before that Platteville tournament. So you do a lot for us. I appreciate you. And, yeah. and of course, Matt, He's he's been very helpful because he's a, he's a captain and he's trying to teach me how to be a captain because i've never i've never been in this position to, before so you guys have been really good mentors for for me and my team for sure i definitely wanted to make sure that when you guys like drove to platteville that you guys weren't going to be entirely shell-shocked by shot clock <laughs> because shot yeah. clock was my biggest concern because trying to do that without knowing like i had trouble at my first tournament and my team knew what they were doing so i didn't want you guys to be in a position where you were entirely lost there yeah, we that definitely helped out a lot. You teaching us that because we knew how it worked, but like you said, there's just certain things that you don't know until you're actually, you know, in game using it with another team. And we had a lot of balls over during our first tournament, but I mean, it, it could have gone a lot worse. And I think the the Western Mission, the Peter Bro Classic, was uh, a lot more. That was a lot cleaner of a tournament for us. We didn't have yeah. too many balls over that that time. Yeah, so. you guys were definitely doing much much better there. Yeah, with time management uh, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think goes into your success on the court? Me, you talking about me personally, or you personally? Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's been a really, really challenging for me trying to, you know, be a captain for this team. I'm doing so much. You know, I started the club and then trying to, you know, get every all these people together for practices and working with my school to get times and stuff. It's been really challenging so far, and just trying to be that leader on the court has been really tough, but I think everybody around me has done a good job of making me feel more confident in that. So I think just having the supporting cast of people and that I would consider friends now has been, is, is what make is what is making me more successful as a player. Um, I think it's just us working together. That's, it's a team sport for sure. You can't be an individual in the sport. And I think the people around me is they've definitely, they're the reason why I'm successful, and I, I hope that they feel the same way about my impact in their game and stuff. So, I've definitely gotten to see, even from just the first practice that I like came to to like help you guys out at. I've definitely gotten to see you grow a lot as a leader, even just since then. And 
I've only gotten to see you in person like three times. So Mm -hmm. I I can definitely say that like you have grown a lot as a leader and as a person and you have definitely like even when you're frustrated, you've been a pretty positive person for your team, which is super, super helpful for them. And like you've just been really supportive of your team and it's been really nice to see. And then you're always willing to work on what you're doing to get better. So I think that is also really nice to see is you're just ready and willing to work on whatever you can to improve yourself. Yeah, I appreciate that. I mean, having a good leader is extremely important for a team sport. So I remember like during our early practices, like I'm a, I feel like I'm a pretty decent like public speaker, but it's like different trying to like be a coach and like a leader and that type of stuff. I was scared. I was really scared and like our beginning practices trying to like talk with everybody explain the rules tell everybody what to do and stuff and now it's just it comes like second nature to me and i can just talk to these people like i would uh with any other group of people so i I do think that i'm getting more comfortable and i think that's gonna be really important going forward especially for our other captains too i think that we were just very um i wouldn't say skittish but we were just we were not being great leaders in the first tournament just because we weren't like confident yet so i think as we like go into these other tournaments practice more do more like team bonding stuff we'll uh we'll be better off as a team altogether just because good leadership is i think very important especially in like a team sport confidence and leadership seems to be like a really important thing for team sports and seeing you guys all grow as a team has been really good in the ncda and we're definitely excited to see you guys keep moving because we absolutely want you guys to succeed. And especially with you showing out as much as you did at the last tournament, even when you guys were down and you guys were frustrated, you guys were still absolutely working your hardest to try to do whatever you could to get back up. And you personally were working really hard on your catching. I know that you were working on that and you got more catches that one, even if you were a little bit frustrated with like the kind of catches and you felt like you could do more, it was definitely good getting to see you like really put in that effort toward getting better at that yeah because i've realized catching is i would say the most important aspect of uh this style of dodgeball and throwing is like my expertise but i realize you can't just you can't just be a thrower like obviously you can have success being just a thrower but i really want to get better at catching and just be able to do everything because i know i'm athletic enough to like learn how to catch and it's just going to be a lot of repetition and stuff but i just don't want to be somebody who can only throw Because there's a lot of people in the league like that, and sometimes that can be an issue. And I I I really do think that catching is is the key to winning. So that's going to be what we're focusing on in our practices for um, the first few weeks back from the next semester. And you you were saying how uh, you guys are excited to see how our team grows and stuff. I am too, because I think that we're, we're like, I think we're like one of the most athletic teams that I've seen. And although that we, we can't win right now, you can't teach athleticism, but you know, all this other stuff will come with it. I do think once we like learn the sport better and we get some experience and stuff, I think that we can be a pretty good team eventually just because of how athletic our team is. I mean, I would, I think like over 50% of our players are in a college sport and probably good 75% of the team used to be uh, a college athlete. So we're a very athletic team. It's just, we gotta, we gotta, you know, learn the sport and get some experience and i think then we'll we'll really grow as a team and we'll start to win and see some success yeah i've definitely seen a lot of athleticism from your team i think that has been a really big thing for you guys and i feel like as soon as you guys start to get it down just a little bit more it's going to be so much easier for you guys to continue growing yeah it's it's just getting started is the hard part and you guys already got through a lot of the getting started process so you definitely are on the up okay that's good to hear (laughs) um do you have any, does your team have any pre-match rituals? Uh, yeah, so the only one that I can really think about that we do collectively as a team, because everybody, you know, they do their own their own things, but uh, we, we do prayer before, um, like, a match. So we'll come together and we'll pray. We're a Lutheran-based school, and everybody on our team is pretty religious, so uh, we always just do a quick prayer before we do our match. That's probably our only pre-game ritual. Do you personally have any pre-game rituals? Um, yeah, I do. I do. Um, I'll listen to a couple songs to to get me kind of amped up for for the matches and stuff. I, I can't do it before every match, but uh, usually before I start the tournament, I'll listen to a uh, a couple specific songs to you know get me mentally prepared for the match. Okay. Just you know. 
trying to get yourself ready for it, get yourself in the right headspace. Yes, exactly. Uh, what are your pre and post tournament meals? Oh, boy. it's not Chipotle. <laughs> I know half the I know half the league chooses Chipotle. <laughs> their pre and after game meals um we, we i don't think we have any, anything like specific like that yet uh for me personally i we, we just all have what the team has and as uh, the, the pretty much the president of the club i have to orchestrate all the food and all that type of stuff so the first tournament we just did like sub sandwiches and then the second tournament um what did we end up doing for the second tournament i think we just got like domino's pizza so we, we haven't really uh, picked out uh, specific meals yet, but um, right now I'm just trying to focus on getting everybody fed. So yeah. hopefully in the future we can come up with some some sort of meal that we can all enjoy. Okay. Um, who do you think is going to win it at Nationals this year? Mm, I haven't seen too many matches, and I don't think I'm quite an expert on that yet, but um, I know Grand Valley, they, they always have a shot at it. They're really good this year. Um, Nebraska's really good from what I've seen. Um, they kicked our, they kicked our butts in the, in the first tournament. Um, trying to think, isn't, who's, uh, ranked number one right now? Isn't it Michigan? Uh, I think it might be Ohio. It's either Ohio or Michigan. I can't remember. I know Ohio and Michigan have some crazy schools. I could see, I could see it being Grand Valley. I could see. Um, I know one MSU of the, at the last tournament that you were at went three and zero. Yeah, MSU is so. really good. OSU, from what I saw, was really good. Uh, MSU beat OSU last tournament, didn't they? They played I each think, other. I think MSU had three wins. They were they beat Grand Valley, UWP, and maybe it was OSU that yeah it was OSU that they beat as well. Yeah, I mean, I could see any of those teams winning. Anybody in the top five, I think, definitely has a shot. Uh, I haven't seen too many matches in person though, so I don't know if I, if that's the right answer. But I don't know. I obviously, Grand Valley I can mean, win it. Like they've done it so many times, and I, mean, it's I don't know. A personal thing than a than that. There's a right answer. So like, who am I cheering for? Yeah, who are you rooting <laughs> that, for this year? I would. I don't know. I would love to see like Platteville win or something. That'd be cool. You know, yeah. Platteville, the Wisconsin underdog, team yeah. win. Yeah, they are a big underdog. I think they're ranked like in the ten range. It'd be cool to see somebody who's like, you know, they're they're a great team, but they're not projected to like win. I wouldn't say so. That'd be cool to see like them win, but I'm, it could be Grand Valley, it could be one of the big Ohio schools or one of the big Michigan schools for sure. But if I had to, if I had to choose a team to win, I would probably choose Platteville. That'd be cool to see like a Wisconsin team win it. Yeah. Um, why do you wear your number? Um, I was born on February 10th, and I wore 10 growing up in baseball my entire life and then in high school and college once you're not like able to choose your number it's just kind of giving it to you uh i went and i think i wore like 16 and then 18 and i wore like 47 in college so when i got the dodgeball club going and stuff and i was able to choose my number i was like oh, i gotta do 10 because that's what i wore growing up as a kid and stuff awesome so did you end up picking it when you were a kid because you because it was your birthday that yeah that's that's pretty much why i oh, was that's just a cool reason yeah, I was always obsessed with, you know, being number 10 because I was born on February 10th. I don't know. Just weird. Oh. Uh, who do you think has the best jersey this season? Hmm. I think ours is really cool. I don't think they're the best, but I think ours are pretty cool. Um, I have no idea. Let me think here. I think Ken has really cool jerseys. Uh, I don't know if I would consider them the best, but they're very unique. Um, I think Kent's are probably my favorite that I've seen with like the lightning and stuff. I think mm -hmm. that I think they have probably the coolest jerseys. I would I probably pick them. I, I like Kent's a lot. I definitely with simplistic jerseys think that your guys's are my favorite as far as simplistic jerseys. And That's what we were going. Kent has a really good design too. Yeah, we were going for like a simple look. We didn't want to look like idiots, so we, we were like, let's just play it safe and go with a simplistic look, but. I really do like Kent's. They did a good job of making a more, you know, in-depth design look good and not bad. Because most of the time when you try and go over the top with jerseys, they just usually look tacky. But I think yeah. Kent did a really good job. It is definitely really hard to make jerseys look like that. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, I think that is all the questions that I have for you. But thank you for joining me for this. It's been great talking to you. And we are really looking forward to seeing what you continue to do with your team and seeing you grow.
Awesome. Yeah. I cannot wait. Thank you guys so much for having me. I really appreciate it.